Golf Central on YouTube. Brought to you by Apex Irons from Callaway. Hello and welcome inside our Golf Channel studios. I'm George Sabarikis with four-time PGA Tour winner. That's Golf Channel analyst Billy Kratzer. What a story we saw mm. on Sunday at the John Deere Classic, the 50th edition of this tournament. A special one for Lucas Glover snapping a decade-long victory drought between number three and number four on the PGA Tour. And it was a final round 64 for Lucas Glover as he's able to get the job done at TPC Deer Run. Here's Glover after the victory. We spoke just a moment ago about the fact that it's actually been quite tough for you the last 10 years, um, making your way back into the winner's circle, but you rededicated yourself two years ago. Tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, rededicated is an interesting term, I guess. I've always worked hard and and believed in it, but uh, made some changes two or three years ago that uh, needed to do for more longevity with my body and my trainer, um, Colby Tulia. He's, he's done a great job with me and, and kind of reinvigorated fitness for me, which is uh, which is a big thing because um, I want to play. I want to play a few more years and uh, try to keep going. But uh, um, and it was just uh, getting getting back refocused. I always thought I could do this again, and, and I just needed to figure out the best way to, to go about it again. Well, you did just that. And finally, how special is it that your two children, eight years old and six years old, get to experience this one yeah, with you? Yeah, fantastic. And then my wife as well. She's never uh, she's never seen me win a tournament. So um, very, uh, very excited. I spoke to my daughter a minute ago, and uh, it wasn't official yet. She just said, nice job, and, and she was happy for me. So. Um, then my son, he probably doesn't care, but uh, that's the way it is. <laughs> uh, but uh, pretty cool. That's uh, I remember that, that that was my biggest takeaway when Tiger won his last Masters was that his kids got to got to see him as champ, and uh, that's you know that was a goal of mine too. Absolutely. Well, uh, enjoy the celebrations with your family. I know you're in the Open Championship next week, but um, huge congratulations. Thank Lucas. you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Billy, it's rare on the PGA Tour that we see a winless drought of that length then snapped. You, generally speaking, when you see the stage of the career that Lucas Glover's in, you think, okay, his best days are behind him. He's going to end up with three victories. What did he have to overcome and change with his game to then ultimately win again? Ultimately, um, it, it's the putter. Uh, he goes in and out of form with the putter, and uh, it's well documented. Uh, in fact, he missed several short putts this week, uh, even though he was the champ, uh, and he made a six-footer on the 72nd hole. I mean, I, and he just poured it right in the center. So there are times when he looks a little shaky, but there are times when all of a sudden he looks like he's going to win multiple tournaments. Um, but I think that's the big difference. Uh, he's, a, he's a great ball striker, drives the ball well, hits solid iron shots. Um, he was able to rely on that, made some birdies down the stretch, made the critical putts at the critical time, and he just he stayed patient. And, um, you know, he, he kind of had a number in mind. He was trying to get to 20 under par, and he was just kind of going after that number. And sometimes when you go after a number, all the – outside noises that you sometimes hear as a player, uh, you become deaf to those, those noises, and that's kind of what happened. It's pretty amazing to see that uh, Lucas Glover able to focus on the putter and ultimately get this done, even though, like Billy said, it had a couple short misses, but to pour it in on the 72nd hole at what was arguably the biggest moment of the tournament was great to see. While he may be on the back nine of his career, at the Aberdeen Scottish Open, Minwoo Lee is just getting started at 22 years old. This is his second career European Tour victory in thrilling fashion. Three-man playoff with Thomas Dietrich and Matt Fitzpatrick. He birdies the first playoff hole to get the job done. I mean, it was an awesome day. I was pretty proud of the way I played. Um, six birdies in a row. That was, that was sweet. Uh, just kind of happened really quick. And then... Um, you know, I could have held a few more parts. I mean, uh, in regulation, I missed it by, you know, just a roll and it was kind of painful. But, you know, we regrouped and, you know, it's tournament starts in the playoff pretty much. And... Oh, we love you! <laughs> love you too. Um, yeah, it's just, it's crazy. I, you know, it was just kind of dreamt of it, you know, last night. And, yeah, people back home staying, staying up late to watch me, you know, sending messages. This one's for you too. <laughs>
Yeah, popular victory down yeah. in Australia. We saw the big mm. names and the pedigree on the first page of the leaderboard, and then Minwoo Lee pops up on Sunday, gets off to that fast start. Mm -hmm. Were you surprised how he delivered under pressure down the stretch? Well, he had the one win, but now he has two wins uh, on the European Tour, and uh, this was a big one uh, to win the Scottish Open. But uh, am I surprised? I think when I see guys kind of get in that that kind of that mindset yeah. and they start stamping out good shot after good shot and then they make a putt you can just kind of see their confidence grow a little bit they get a little more comfortable on the golf course yeah I mean they're always going to be anxious moments and you have to overcome those but when he got into the playoff I thought well okay maybe maybe this is going to be Fitzpatrick because he has the most experience uh, with the two young guys Dietrich he's 21 so I thought it was going to be Fitzpatrick but all of a sudden Lee he just steps up there hits a great shot the whole location on the 72nd hole on the playoff hole it was on top of that plateau that shelf it was tough to get to he's the only one to put it up there and then he caps it off with the putt so great win and he stood the test each win can be a different chapter in your career how would you what would the headline be in this chapter for the second victory for Minwoo Lee I would say that, you know obviously his biggest win up to this point in his professional career okay what's the next step well I think you know the order of merit on the European tour the race to Dubai you know just continue to improve and then put yourself in position to win more you know he's got a couple wins at 22 years old but put yourself in position to win more and then when you get that chance to win a major championship when it comes I think you're going to be more prepared John Rahm the world number one was just a couple shots out of that playoff mm -hmm. any concerns whatsoever with the putter and the short misses that he had this week I'm not I'm not concerned George uh, I, I think uh, you know we saw probably a, a John Rahm that uh, with the putter uh, we saw him kind of go especially in the third round we saw him start off poorly and then he kind of recovered and then we saw him finish poorly and he just kind of didn't make any putts today but I think the ball striking was there uh, I think uh, 16 was a big hole for him uh, not not birdie in that hole that kind of just took everything out and so going forward uh, the last two days the 16th hole the par five he played him one over and that was an easy easy hole you got to play that hole two under par spinning it spinning it ahead to the open John Rahm Justin Thomas Z Xander Shoffley at times was on the first page of the leaderboard of those three guys whose game do you like the most to Royal St. George's if I, would, if I was to put a betting favorite out there, I'd go ahead and go with John Rahm. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, even though he's relinqu relinquished the number one uh, position in the official world golf rankings, I still think he's playing the best golf of anyone in the world right now. Shafle, yeah, he's played well. Uh, JT, you know, is the putter going to get hot mm -hmm. over at uh, Royal St. George? I don't know. Uh, but I think John Rahm, with the way that he strikes the ball, I think he loves the tough conditions. I think... Uh, Royal St. George is going to be a golf course that um, he, it's going to suit him quite nicely. Uh, you go back to when DJ had a chance to win. Yeah. It can be a bomber's golf course. And, and you know, John Rahm is in that category. So I, I'm going to make him the betting favorite. Okay. Well, it's a popular pick, I would think, especially yeah. on that side of the Atlantic, considering John Rahm just won his first major uh, at Torrey Pines. And there were some big names who are sitting this one out, like uh, Hideki Matsuyama had to withdraw, Bubba Watson. So it'll be interesting to see what the field ultimately winds up by the time the first ball is in the air on Thursday. Thanks for joining us.